My friend sent me a meme the other day that said, if you were born in the 1990s, you're either getting married, having a baby, or training for a marathon. And of course there are exceptions, but like, yeah, that reel pretty much sums it up. I'm getting dangerously close to running this half marathon in a couple of weeks. I can't believe it's already here. It just feels like yesterday I filmed my first week of training. I'm running the RBC Brooklyn half marathon on May 18th starting in Prospect Park for the first half, and then it goes all the way down south to Coney Island, finishing there, which I'm really excited about. So I thought it would be fun to have a whole video just focused on running and taking you through my peak week of training, have this be a time to go over my favorite running gear, running products, my training programs, and like what goes through my mind during all of this. Just kidding. I have a lot of thoughts about this topic, in fact. I've been using the Hal Higdon Intermediate 2 training program this time around. It's my first time using the program. It's free online, and I've modified it a little bit to cater to what my body needs more of or what my body needs less of. And also, I've heard that that training program can be very intense for people and that they've endured injuries because of how intense it was and how it how soon it ra ramps up the mileage. I've taken it a bit easier. It's typically like six days of training, one rest day, one cross training day, and the rest are runs. And so I've eliminated one of those runs to be a strength training day, so I have an extra. So today's Tuesday, I have an easy run on deck. It, today's easy run is five miles at a really slow pace. I'm trying to stay within zone two for my heart rate. I've never really done a lot of heart rate tracking. I learned that I have a naturally very high heart rate, so I'm really never in zone two. But I try and just run as slow as I can so that uh, it's at least conversational. And that's how I'm kind of tracking my zone too because my heart rate's still super high. Disclaimer though, I am not a professional runner. I don't ever really even know what I'm doing. I am strictly a hobbyist. So take what I say with a grain of salt, but like I always try to be real and never sugarcoat anything. I can't say that I recommend this sunscreen in particular. It does kind of like dry up and peel off a little bit by the time I'm back from my runs, but it's what we have for now and I'm gonna use it up. For my face, I oscillate between three different sunscreens. Depends on the weather, depends my personal preference. Right now, I'm kind of addicted to the Naturium. SPF 50. This is really heavy. It makes my face look pretty greasy, but I also use the Super Goop Unseen Sunscreen SPF 40 sometimes. This is water and sweat resistant. Prevents you from getting oily. It has like a dimethicone finish. And then Elta MD SPF 46. Actually, this one is not the one I normally get. The one I normally get is SPF 46, but this one's SPF 40 and it's tinted and I don't normally get the tinted one. I think this is left over from last year. Yeah, those are the three that I use. I want the SPF 50 today because I think it's going to be pretty sunny out. Sunscreen is super important when you're running. It's so covered in lint. But this is my running hat, my favorite running hat. Love this one from Amazon. This fanny pack it was a little more expensive in like the 40 dollar range you can put so much in it the brand is nathan there's two different compartments with a divider in here it's actually quite compact and it doesn't bounce around then i also make sure to use a sunscreen lip balm not a lint roller oh this feels like running show and tell <laughs> i have these running socks these are nice and thick. I got these on Amazon in a six pack and I have two of those, so I have 12 pairs of these. And then I have these. These are the running shoes that I, I broke in last week. This is only the second run. They're, they're gonna have been on. They're the Asics Women's Nova Blast 4. I'm enjoying them so far. I'm excited to see if I have more opinions on them now that I've broken them in a little bit more. But I took them out for 10 miles on Friday. And if you watched my last video, you know that it went pretty well. So this is something that I have... Let me explain. I cut up a washcloth into fourths because when I run, my nose just consistently does not stop running. I've gotten very good at the snot rocket and like gauging when the right time to blow the snot rocket is. But sometimes there's a little residue left over, which if you're running for a while, then it gets kind of hard to breathe through your nose. Last time I used toilet paper and it just didn't really go well. <laughs> it disintegrated really quick. For today's easy run, I probably don't need a gel, but I'm gonna test out another brand. Because I listened to Gracie Norton's podcast on her running the half marathon, and she recommended these Go Gels. 
I have never used them before. I'm not really a fan of apple cinnamon flavors in gels. I'm more of a fan of like citrusy stuff, but they worked for her. But I've been using science and sport gels for the entirety of my training and they're really easy to go down. I changed shirts. It's too hot for a long sleeve. Don't want to overheat. 70 degrees out today. minutes 30 seconds so I can actually slow down a little bit and the fact that I'm able to even talk to you right now shows that I found like a good easy pace Well, I definitely could have kept going. There's a few times I was just like feeling good and had to pull myself back from going too fast because that's one thing I've really learned in this process and from watching. I follow like several pages on Instagram that have been really helpful uh, and they say like one of the biggest tips is making sure the easy runs stay easy so that way you don't wear yourself out throughout the week before your longer run. And then the gel itself, um, I don't, I didn't really like it that much. It feels too heavy for me, just the flavor of it. It's, the consistency was nice, but the flavor of it wasn't for me, but I'm gonna try them again. I'm not just gonna write them off because it. I do feel great. It gave me energy. So if it works, it works, but I was feeling a little bit weird in the stomach um, in the second half, but it could not have anything to do with the gel and maybe it was just me and that avocado toast I ate this morning. Hi, so my period started this morning. So I'm not sure how I feel just wearing a tank top because I'm just a little bloated, you know? If you're someone who menstruates, you understand. <laughs> You get like one good week a month and then good luck. So I might wear a bigger shirt today. It's kind of ugly, but I'm not trying to impress nobody at the gym, I guess. Yeah, whatever. Do I need to like steam this? <laughs> it's a bit wrinkly, but like, again, I'm going to the gym. Why would I steam it? Today I have to do laundry. Laundry is a huge part of training. I probably should do like a load every day. So today's run is a 45 minute tempo run. My plan says that it's like 15 to 20 minute warm up jog, and then it's 20 minutes running at tempo pace, and then another like 10 minute jog cool down. I'm a little not sure if I should actually do this today because my period just started today and I'm I kind of just don't want to push it, but I don't feel that fatigued because I slept pretty well last night. I'm just going to kind of give it a shot, and if it doesn't feel like it's in my body today, then I'll let it go. So my tempo pace, when I started training, it was 8.50 a mile. It was my, my race pace, uh, my goal race pace, but uh, I'm slowly just kind of letting that one go, and I think it'll be more around like the 9, 30, 10 minute mile area. Just even as I'm talking, I'm starting to sweat more. Like, I feel like my cramps are getting worse. I don't know if I'm gonna be able to do this. I'm definitely gonna take a gel on my way to the gym. I'm gonna try these again and see how they work with my stomach. I'm gonna bring my water bottle. I forgot to show you this yesterday. It's a little bit on the pricier side, but I hold it like this and it's just perfect. <laughs> and it has a little pouch here. Okay, we should get up.
Listen, I had a, a great run. I had a great time. So overall, really glad I went. I was kind of fighting cramps throughout, but that's okay. I was also fighting my shorts. These shorts kept riding up, and now I'm about to take a shower and it's going to burn. All right, so this is fun. Good job, guys. High five. See you tomorrow. <laughs> it's strength training day. I get to go to the gym today and I'm actually excited about it. Here's the fit. You can kind of see. Let's go. I am really proud of myself for prioritizing intentional strength training in my training block, which has been critical in the improvement that I've seen in my running. I genuinely believe that without Copilot Fitness, who is sponsoring today's video, I would not, my running would not be where it is today. And I truly believe that. If you didn't know, Copilot Fitness is a fitness made easy app that combines the personalization and accountability of a human expert with the flexibility of technology. So your assigned virtual coach customizes your guided workouts to your schedule and to your specific goals. I have been using Copilot for about six months now, back when I started in November 2023, I believe. I was just finishing running the New York Marathon and I didn't really know where to take my fitness goals from there. I was assigned Coach Megan. I love her. She created a plan with me to help me stay conditioned in between training blocks and she was really there for me through the ups and downs as my fitness goals were evolving. I initially was like adamant about doing at-home workouts with body weight only because I was low-key afraid of everything at the gym outside of the treadmill. Can anyone relate to that? <laughs> but look at me now. Now that I've been training, my coach has curated a whole strength session with weights tailored to my body and the specific muscle groups I needed to strengthen for running and where I felt my weak points were. Specifically for me, it's the shoulders, the core, the quads, the hamstrings, and the glutes. Those are the muscle groups that I found I really rely on to power me through the long runs. And so the pressure doesn't end up going into my hips. So if I think about if I wasn't using Copilot Fitness and I was like trying to create a whole strength training session on my own with the knowledge that I have, I think it would just have taken me a really, really long time. And I can't say that I would have the knowledge to know exactly like what level of weights to even start out or when to up the weights or when to decrease the weights or like if I feel something strange in my back or my knees, like I wouldn't know how to adjust that. For example, last week during these Romanian deadlifts, I mentioned to coach how my lower back was sore after doing them. And so she adjusted the weight and the rep amount so I could still get the benefit of the exercise. And I had no issues this time, which was great. I feel like if I didn't have coach to refer to in that moment, I would have just cut out the whole set and probably ended up missing out on strengthening those muscle groups. So like being able to rely on my coach, Megan, that's been just one less thing to worry about. All I've had to do do now is just focus on showing up, communicating with my coach and showing up. That is it. I felt so strong during that workout and I can definitely feel like I've made progress and it's really encouraging. I messaged coach Megan to let her know how it went. She's like the nicest cheerleader ever. <laughs> so if this sounds like something you'd be interested in trying it, make sure to click the Copilot Fitness link to get 14 days free with your very own expert personal trainer. And I wanna give one giant thank you again to Copilot Fitness for sponsoring my video today. I think I wanna pull out the juicer. Let's make a fun juice. So much better than the other juice. <laughs> That's a really good recipe. The ginger is great. Today was a definite success with strength training. I really do enjoy doing strength training now and that's something I'll continue after the marathon too. It's just great to like finish all that off with the green juice. Chelsea's in her wellness era, everybody. Woohoo! Okay, it's 
so I didn't fill you in. I'm heading on my way to pick up my running bib for a 5K that I have on Saturday. So I'm kind of in Central Park South area right now. It's really beautiful weather. <laughs> I wish the 5K was today. The 5K is in Queens, and it's my first qualifying race for the 9 plus 1 to get guaranteed entry into the marathon for next year. I'm, I'm not sure if I'm going to be running it, honestly, but I want the option to run it. So now I'm, I'm picking up my bib, which is like my little race number. Tomorrow is going to be 12 months. So I don't know how I'm actually going to perform with the 5K, but we'll see. We'll see. If I stay a little more I can't look away from those brown eyes And if we settle down We don't have to settle down Please don't be afraid of all the things that could go wrong We can take our time And we may change our mind But I can tell a good thing when a good thing comes along. I am heading down to the Lower East Side Film Festival tonight, so that's separate from this video, but I brought my water bottle full of Element, my electrolytes, so that way I can get at least a liter of electrolytes in before I go to sleep, so that when I wake up tomorrow, I'll have another, and then I'll be like really good to go, ready for the 12 mile run. to take the train to Prospect Park. I'm gonna start running there. I've never ran through Prospect Park. The last time I was there, I got stood up for a date to go skateboarding. I skateboarded anyways, because he didn't show up. And then <laughs> I fell off the skateboard and I ended up in the ER. Let's make some new memories today. <laughs> We're just gonna run 12 miles, the longest run, crazy. Let me know your thoughts on this. I want to have my friends and family be as hyped for my races as they would be if I was having a bridal or a baby shower. I wish to have my running milestones, no matter how small they are, be celebrated pillars in my life, just as much as getting married and having kids would be. Marriage and kids will probably happen one day years from now, but it's crazy that those are the biggest milestones with the biggest amount of pressure. And they can make you feel so rushed in life. And for what? As president and CEO of my YouTube channel, I demand that we celebrate the wins of the people closest to us, making progress, doing things that bring them joy, or even celebrate them for no reason at all. Just, you know, getting through the day. I want to know though, if you're a runner, no matter what level, what is the biggest lesson the sport has taught you? Leave it in the comments below. Feeling good. Mile and a half. Prospect Park is beautiful. So far, the hills aren't killing me yet, but We'll see. It's only it's only a mile and a half in, so it's gorgeous. The park is done. We're like four miles long, and I'm going to see the Manhattan Bridge. I'm just so grateful I had today's run. It gave me so much confidence. My legs were just on fire, it felt like, and I really believe it's the, the shoes for some of it. Um, switching to Asics, Nova Blasts, uh, was a really good move. The hills were like, I was feeling great. I didn't feel like I ever had to stop the entire time, except until the end when I really pushed it. Once I left Prosper Park and I started going toward Manhattan Bridge, I got stopped at a few stoplights and I was kind of annoyed by that. 
then I got a little lost trying to find the pedestrian entrance to the Manhattan Bridge. But once I was on the bridge, I like flew up it. Like it was no big deal. Total elapsed time was two hours and one minute. I feel like almost it's possible. Like the goal I had was in reach and all I had to do was just let, let go of wanting it so bad that it started to happen. But I'm very tired. I think it's around 11.30. And I have an early wake up call tomorrow to do a 5k. It's in Flushing Meadow Corona Park. The incline doesn't look too intense. So I'm hoping that it just goes really fast and, and then I can go home. <laughs> it's like 7 a.m. I start running at 8. <laughs> I have to go to Flushing. I took the subway both ways yesterday for the 12 miler. So that I didn't feel so bad about Ubering this morning. <laughs> And it worked. I don't feel bad about it. <laughs> I don't have time for coffee. Just gonna grab a banana. Go. Just bring me one gel. Ooh, the bananas don't look that good. Damn. my Strava on so I have no idea what pace I did but I feel like I did less than 10 minute miles we'll see that 5k after those 12 miles completely wrecked me my body was totally shot that was a long week of training this is the most effort that i've put into a training block ever and this is the most progress that i've seen from a training block ever so it's all gonna come down to race day which is in just a couple weeks and i'm gonna bring you along with me for that and then the running content will conclude for a moment <laughs> so the results finally came out for the 5k and i ran it in 31 minutes and 31 seconds exactly that's the fastest 5k i've ran with new york road runners i think it was like 10 minutes six or seven seconds per mile that's pretty fast considering my legs were just jello if there's one thing that running has taught me it's that no process is seamless there's going to be new surprises every single training block but like you learn how to navigate that almost with the trust that you know everything's going to work out in the end even if you don't hit your goal, there's still value to take from the experience. And you really can see what your body is capable of. And that's like my favorite part of it is that's what, you know, running has taught me that I, my body is way more capable of doing things that I never even imagined. Anyways, I'm sure this video is way too long. So as a reminder, make sure to click the link in my description box below to sign up for 14 days free with your very own Copilot Fitness Trainer. Thank you again to Copilot for sponsoring my video today. If you like this video, make sure to give it a thumbs up before you go. The engagement really helps YouTube recognize my channel and push it out to a wider audience so you can continue to grow this lovely community. Leave a comment to say hi and make sure to consider subscribing if you've seen a few videos of mine and you're like, hmm, this, this gal is okay. Make sure to just hit that button before you go and then so I can make sure to see you next time. Let's go crush this half marathon. Are you ready? I'm ready. I love you. Bye.